Lynch here, and welcome back to another Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. This is episode 4, and um, as you probably read in the intro, um, after a brief investigation, um, we're back in our manned space program. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, bring up the vehicle assembly building. Um, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of building... Um, the rocket ahead of time. Largely because I imagine y'all don't want to see me building the rocket every single time I, um, I attempt a mission. And in particular, we're going to use, um, an upgraded version of Moho 7 that's based off of our, um, our Quetnik, or... Was it Quetnik? No, it was Fwetnik. Our Fwetnik clot stack. And this has, um, a few extra, um, bits to it to help the rocket get up into orbit, so, um, we of course have, um, a little bit more fuel because this rocket is a little bit more massive, um, and since we discovered throughout the update that rockets, or that orbiters now require power, we have some solar panels here. We also added, um, a docking thing, uh, a docking clamp so that, um, we can attempt today's mission, which is docking two, um, spaceships together. And because the docking clamp did take some room, um, where the parachute normally be, we put our parachutes on the side. So let's go ahead and launch this thing. You might be wondering who is enlisted in this project now that, um, now that pretty much, um, Anybody and everybody that might have been interested was probably discouraged by Jerob. I think it's Jebediah Kerbin's, uh, or Kerman rather, Jebediah Kerbin's crash, because he did have quite a, um, a doozy there. And I suppose we'll find out when this thing loads. And so, um,. There are at least two other Carbonauts in the program. Although it appears that Jebediah Kerman's been reanimated. I guess he's green because the Kerbals are zombies. And so let's just go ahead and do ourselves a bit of um of pre flight um preparation. We're going to shoot for our typical hundred K orbit here, and, um, I don't think that should be too hard to achieve. This rocket's fairly robust, so we're just going to go ahead and lift off, and when we get up to 150k or so, or maybe even 100k, or 100 meters per second, rather, we're just going to trim down on the engine some, try to, uh, save as much as we can in our fuel budget. So, um... This shouldn't be too terribly hard because what we're going to do is, um, pretty much take our gravity turn at 10k. And then, um, we will hopefully, um, We'll hopefully have a very easy time getting into orbit. So let's just go ahead and, um, I suppose, get this thing um, started. We have probably about another 400 or so, or not 400, 4,000, now 3,000 feet to go, and we've already got little bit under half of a tank of fuel, so I think, um, our goal is pretty reasonable. And so, uh, now we're at our point to turn. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't think it should really take too long to, um, to get up to speed here. I'm just gonna go full throttle even though we're in the atmosphere because 
I don't reckon we need... I don't know, we could save a little bit of fuel, I think. It, it'll take us a little while to get up there, so... Uh, we're just gonna go half here and... Wait for these tanks to... Uh, to sp um, run out of fuel and then we will jettison them. I'm just gonna kick this up a bit so that we can reach our um our apoapsis or apoapsis in time. So here um I think uh, like I said before we'll cut out at about um a hundred or so K and we'll just try to get ourselves a nice circular orbit going on. So, um, I don't think that should take too terribly long to do. And we're almost there, so, um, we will lose a little bit of altitude because we're still in the atmosphere, but, um, we still have plenty of fuel left for our, um, for our circularization. And I'm thinking that, um, pretty soon we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to pull off this burn and then, um, and then get ready for our second pilot. So it shouldn't take us too long to reach Apo. have to do a small amount of correction for circularization, but I think that shouldn't be too much of a problem. One thing that may be a bit of a problem for us, though, is the fact that um, we are um, going to run out of fuel mid-burn. And so, um, I'm going to to switch back to um, the cockpit view here in a bit, because I suspect that um, this is going to take a little bit more than 35 seconds to, um, to actually do the barn, so I'm going to start at 15. Actually, I'm going to start it now. And hopefully with what fuel we have in this stage, we'll be able to um, reach our desired orbit without any issue. So, um, we're going to go ahead and jettison this stage, and um, hopefully we will reach periapsis pretty soon. This is complete. So, um, I'm gonna crank down the engine a bit just so that we don't completely burn through that. No, I call that a success for the most part, I think. Um, that is going to be a fairly decent um, orbit, so we just have to bring this down a little. And we can do that by burning retrograde. And, um... Just try to get a 
idea of what our barn should be. It's not going to take long, of course, because, um... We're already pretty much where we need to be. We just need to, um, wait for the proper time. So let's just get ourselves into position here and, um... I'm gonna start the barn almost immediately, because we only need 17 meters per second. Or rather, the barn isn't going to last all that long, so, um... I'll just go ahead and start now, and... See how close we are to our target. I'd say that's good enough. And so the only thing left to do now is to, um... To make the circular... And that shouldn't take too long at all. That should, um, that should really, um, it's hard to tell here because the, the text is, Bleeding in with the um with the deal, so I guess maybe what I should do is um that looks like a hundred right there, a hundred something. Maybe I should just um. Go ahead and prepare this thing for um, a very small barn. It, it doesn't look like it will take all that long, but we have drifted off course slightly, so that's something to take into account. And so we only have like 11 meters per second that we have to worry about here, and um, I think I'm going to start the barn now. What does that bring our apoapsis to? It's about within a kilometer, I think we might even possibly lower it just a shade. I'd say that's probably good enough for us, so we're gonna go ahead and, um, bring up our second vehicle and have somebody meet with Jebediah. So we will, um, just wait for, um, this thing to load. And I'm actually going to change the name of the ship very slightly, because I've found that in doing this kind of maneuver that, um, it seems to be very easy to get the two ships confused. So I'm going to call this Moho 8.1. And the idea here is that we are going to basically wait for this thing to, um, to get pretty close to us. The idea basically being that, um, we'll adjust our orbit based on whether or not it's ahead of us or behind us. 
if it's behind us, what we'll do is we'll take a lower orbit. And if it's ahead of us, then we will take um, a higher orbit. Or the other way around, actually, because um, the lower orbit is going to be a little bit faster for us. So here we have Bill uh, ready to catch up. And um, it doesn't look like it's going to be too long. Just speed up time just a little bit. And um, wait for us to meet up. And I'd say that's probably close enough. So we may end up a little bit ahead or a little bit behind. I guess it really depends a lot on how long it takes us to get out of the atmosphere. Anyway, um, I'm sort of hoping that we'll end up um, with lots of fuel left over to help us with this. And it really shouldn't take all that long for us to meet up. We might be um, off by a few kilometers, I'm hoping. You can almost never tell, though. I mean, it's one of those deals to where... Um, I have enough fuel to where if I wanted to, then I could pretty much um, meet up almost instantly, but um, you have to keep a lot going on in your head, like, I guess eventually where this thing is going to end up, so... Um, what we're going to do instead is instead of trying to hit it exactly, we're going to try to, um, to manipulate our orbit in, a, in order to, um, to make it a bit easier to catch up, so, um, we're just going to, um, hopefully, um, be on the same, um, orbital plane. Because of the way that we've launched, I mean, I think that um, we launched pretty much exactly the same way as with the other one, so I don't think uh, that should be much of an issue. So, um, looks like it's time to jettison our engines and to try to, um, to get into an orbit that's, um, very similar to the other one. It looks like we're actually going to, um, instead of, um, being behind it, we're going to be a little bit ahead of it, so, or maybe the other way around, maybe, um, what I'll do is I'll shoot for an orbit of about 95k. And that should, um, hopefully, put us, um, very close to this capsule. I guess speaking of which, we need to check and see how our fuel's doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and prepare our circularization maneuver. And um, the hope here is, of course, that um, we'll hit maybe about 90k. Because once we reach periapsis, then... Um, it should be fairly easy 
to um to get this thing in the right orientation so we've got a burn time of 42 seconds and that other capsule it seems is ahead of us so um we got some catching up to do for sure so um I'm going to start burning, I think, about 20 seconds or so, maybe 21. And we'll do that now. Looks like we went off course very slightly. Which will give us some... Oh no, our periapsis is, is alright. But we do happen to want to um, bring this down just a little bit. So, um... In the next four minutes or so, um, we will go ahead and um, bring our apoapsis down to um, 90 something. And that shouldn't be too difficult to do, I'm hoping. That should. Um, That right there should do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll get in position for that burn. And we'll just... We'll just, uh... Burn on through. We should be, um, we should be fairly close. There we go, so I'd say we've pretty much successfully performed that burn. Now if we set this as a target, um, then, um, We now have the responsibility of catching up to this thing, which we are doing very slowly. And so it'll take us a couple of orbits to, um, to get to where we need to go, but, um, you can see our distance is going down quite rapidly, and that's a good sign, because when we get to maybe, um, about, oh, I don't know, about, um, four or five K, or even, um, even less than that, we're going to want to burn towards it. So, um, 
I actually want to do it around 10k or so because we're not going to get any better than that due to our positioning. And so if we look, we should see um, the other spacecraft out in the distance. Right over there, so... Um, we're just going to move a little bit towards it. And that may mess with our orbit just a little bit. But we're high enough to where it doesn't really matter. slightly off course it seems, so, um... At this point, um, we will hopefully be in sync with this thing. And that means before too long that we're going to want to, um, we're going to want to, um, burn retrograde. In fact, I'm going to do that a little bit now because, um, we do want, um, to get rid, rid of some of our speed with respect to, um, craft, because now we're very slightly um, um, moving past it, so cool thing about this is, is that now all we really have to do is turn towards it and we should meet up with it pretty soon. And so, well, uh, let's just speed up time a little bit so that, um... There we go. So, um... We are very close now, so, um... Just need to bring this down some. going to, um, to move towards this thing. And very slowly, um, meet up with it, so. thing is definitely a bit of an art to, um, to move. 
move towards it, so it's, um... Let's see where it's at now. So at this rate, um... I can definitely see it. It's just a matter of now using our reaction control fuel to, um, to bring this thing down, so, um, because we are coming at it at a rather weird angle. That's not really something we want to do. We want to, um... We want to hit it... Maybe less than... Um... 10 meters away. So, um... I'm just gonna use this RCS fuel when we get to 10 or so, and, um and bring us down a bit. We might even be able to get in a little bit closer. Might even just do five meters. Although right here does seem a little bit close. So, um, we'll just... I'm just going to, uh fire over here to, to turn us around. And we'll get pointed up towards this thing. Are we still a little bit too high? That's one of the issues with docking that I've found so far is that, um... There does seem to be a bit of an art to it. Thank you. 
see, are we anywhere near close? I think we're a little bit farther, to tell you the truth. Although, yeah, we... There we go, we just successfully docked. So the question is now, what does this do to our orbit? Well, we're still more or less in orbit, which is pretty nice. We can do some pretty nifty things uh, now that we're on, um... Now that we're on the other side, like for instance, we can, um... Incidentally... Um... And incidentally, um... Possibly, you know... Get these guys to switch craft, although, um... That doesn't appear to be working right now. for reasons that are beyond me. And of course, um, we can look at these fuel tanks. Um, we can do a fuel transfer. some kind, it's... I'm not entirely sure how to, to do that. Although I guess we don't really need to at this point. something I will have to, to look up in the future because that is going to be um, a fairly important thing to do. However, both of us do have the means in which to get home. So, now I'm going to go ahead and um, separate this out. So, um, I'll just... Um, Alan Duck. And, um, I'll just go ahead and, um, use my RCS fuel to, first of all, um, prepare for this, um, for the sub-barn. Uh, and, um, second of all, to get out of the way, because we don't want to kill Bill Carmen in this, um, in this accident, so, or in a accident, rather, so, um... As for why my engines aren't coming on, I think I somehow ended up, uh, taking, um, the other craft's fuel. Which is really weird. Well, at any rate, we will, um, go ahead and 
I guess since Bill has the uh, the means to to get down more easily, we will um, bring him down real quick, and then figure out what was going on with the other one, because that is really weird. So, oh. Oh, what is going on here? That is really weird. I don't understand why or how we ran out of fuel. But we still have RCS, so we're going to use that to land Jebediah. That's going to be pretty easy to do, too. All we have to do is, since we're already retrograde, just, um... Just go ahead and burn, um, our RCS fuel retrograde, and that should, in principle, lower us down to the point to where we can land. Because we're already in the atmosphere as it stands. And this is actually not a bad way of doing it, because, um... Because we are out of fuel, it seems to be the case that the, um... The best thing for us to do is to, um... To do this, so we did have a contingency plan in mind. And we will just, um... Should be maybe out of fuel. I'm just gonna keep on burning this thing. Um, towards retrograde. And try to get rid of some of our Rome. Um, some of our fuel, though. You know what? We don't even really need this anymore. So, um... Just to show you that our craft will re-enter successfully, I figured the, the best thing we can do is, um... Let's bring this down, and hopefully, um, hopefully land pretty soon. And that shouldn't be taking too terribly long. I mean, I'm thinking, um... At minimum for us, like, another minute. So, we'll go ahead and, um... I guess wait for this thing to get around 500, because we all know how um, this game likes to rip parachutes off of the um, off of the capsules while they're falling. If you're in, um, you know, if you're in time acceleration mode. Bam. And somewhere we can go to the, um, we can go to the other craft, not to 
Fwetnik Polar, because we don't want to do that. But we can go to, um... Oh, I guess we have to wait for this thing to touch down. But we can switch back and, um, bring our other astronaut back. That shouldn't take too long, because we're about to land, it looks like. I guess since we're no longer in the atmosphere, we can, um... We can go ahead and deorbit, and then, um... I guess wait for, um... Wait for our craft to touch down, which shouldn't really take too long, especially if we, uh, suicide burn, like we're doing right here. I mean, this should already get us down close to where the, the capsule already was, and we can use our RCS just a little bit to Maybe even get us in the the same general area. So let's see. Although I guess we won't be getting in the same general area after all, but um we will be, um, we will be touching down fairly soon, and it's probably going to be okay for us to, um, as a consequence, discard this other stage. And we're already fairly close to, um, to landing as it is. We're much closer than that, uh, that other capsule was. So we can more or less just go ahead and, um... We can more or less just go ahead and, um... Deploy our parachutes pretty soon. I'm not entirely sure where the the ground begins here. So I'm going to deploy my parachutes a little early. Just because um it could be bad if we didn't. What I'm thinking we definitely need in this game is, like, some kind of altimeter. Which I think you actually can attach to your ship. I've just, um... I've never tried, but it would be kind of cool to be able to, um... To see what the real height of the ground is as opposed to sea level. Because in some cases, um... In some cases, sea level seems to be quite a quite a bit lower than the ground. But at any rate, um, yeah, I guess we're 200 feet or so above the the sea level. So at any rate, um, 
the hope is that um, running at full speed like this, we should hopefully, um, you know, be able to um, be able to land this thing in a reasonable amount of time, and then um, we can recover the capsules later on and. I guess that means that this time both of the astronauts surprised, uh, survived, which is a little bit surprising because um, it turns out that the um, the last time um, oh, I guess I need to um, kill the engine real quick. It's a little bit surprising because the other time. Um, we ended up with this issue to where we were doing something way less dangerous and we ended up killing um, Jebediah almost instantly. So I guess the lesson here is, is that um, NASA can create zombies and that's where the best astronauts for all space programs come from. Anyway, this has been Thy Lord Root, and I'll see you next time.